Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have x to the power of 8 minus 121 is equal to 0. Now, what most people would think to do to solve this equation is add 121 on both sides. So then I would get x to the power of 8 equals 121. And then, since x is to the power of 8, take the eighth root on both sides to get an answer of the eighth root of 121. And this method is actually wrong because there are actually many more solutions than just two to this equation. There's many more. So we want to find all of these solutions to this equation. So how are we going to do that? Well, our first step is to rewrite x to the power of 8 as x to the power of 4 times 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 times 2 is equal to x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus 121 which we can rewrite as 11 to the power of 2. And the reason we're going to do that is so now we can use an important algebraic property that states that if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x to the power of 4, and b is 11. So I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 times x to the power of 4 minus 11, which is equal to 0. Now, from here, I get two equations. I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 is equal to 0, and x to the power of 4 minus 11 is equal to 0. And we are still not done yet, because to solve this equation, people are going to think, oh, add 11 on both sides and take the fourth root. But we're going to do the same thing we did with our original equation. I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 4 as x to the power of 2 times 2. And now I can rewrite that as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And 11, I'm going to write as the square root of 11 squared. So now I can use this property again. So I get x squared plus the square root of 11 times x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. And again, I get two equations. I get x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, and x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. Now, what I can do is for x squared minus the square root of 11 equals 0, I'm going to add the square root of 11 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x squared is equal to square root of 11. And now if I take the square root on both sides, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of the square root of 11 is the fourth root of 11. This is positive or negative. Now for x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, I'm going to subtract the square root of 11 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. So now I get the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative square root of 11. So the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of the negative square root of 11, I can write this as negative square root of square root of 11.
So now this is the same. So now if I take the square root on both sides, I get the square root of x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. Or sorry, the square root of negative square root of 11, which I can rewrite as x is equal to the square root of negative 11 to the power of 1 half, which is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 half to the power of 1 half. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So I get x is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 fourth. Now going back here, I have x to the power of 4 plus 11 equals 0. So I can subtract 11 on both sides. And I get x to the power of 4 equals negative 11. Now I can take the fourth root on both sides. So I get x is equal to the fourth root of negative 11. And this is positive or negative. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 200 squared minus 199 squared. And to solve this problem, I actually have three different methods. So make sure to stick for all three of the methods to find out which one is the best one for you. So for method number one, what I'm going to do is rewrite 200 squared as 199 plus 1 squared. So now I have 199 plus 1 squared minus 199 squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now this means that 199 plus one squared, this should equal 199 squared plus two times 199 times one plus one squared. And this is equal to 199 squared plus 398 plus 1, which is equal to 199 squared plus 399. So this means that 200 squared minus 199 squared is equal to, well, this right here is 200 squared. So 199 squared plus 139. And now I have this minus 199 squared. So 199 squared and negative 199 squared, these two cancel out. And all I'm left with is 139. Or sorry, this is actually 399. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with 399. So this is my answer. Now for method number two, my problem was 200 squared minus 199 squared. And now for this method, what I'm going to do is rewrite 199 squared as 200 minus one squared. So in our first method, we wrote, we wrote 200 squared as 199 plus one squared. This time we're gonna rewrite 199 squared as 200 minus one squared. So now, if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a squared minus two ab plus b squared. So 200 minus one squared
is equal to 200 squared minus 2 times 200 times 1 plus 1 squared. And now this is equal to 200 squared minus 400 plus 1, which is equal to 200 squared minus 399. So this is the value of 199 squared. So 200 squared minus 199 squared is going to equal 200 squared minus 200 squared minus 399, which is equal to 200 squared minus 200 squared plus 399. So then these two cancel out, and then this is equal to 399. So that is my second method. And now finally for method number three, I have 200 squared minus 199 squared. And I know from methods one and two, what I did was I rewrote either one of these, but now I'm simply gonna just use a property that says a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And I'm gonna use this property on here. So this means that I get 200 plus 199 times 200 minus 199. 200 plus 199 is 399, and 200 minus 199 is simply 1. So I get 399 times 1, which is just 399. And as you can see, this is, properly, is probably the most efficient out of the three methods because I've solved it the fastest. So whenever you see something in the form a number squared minus another number squared, always use this property because it's really helpful to solving your problem fast.